It's the Jill stream. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Jill stream. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I get nervous when, when the stream starts, and so I have to do stuff to, like, make Why? it goofy. Why don't so. you just script yourself some patter, opening patter? Because <laughs> opening patter sucks. <laughs> and I was like... Oh, well, this is uh, the Jill stream, and that is clearly Jill, but I am Antonio Bryce, and uh, I'm a comic book writer and a, a horrible one at that. And uh, you can catch uh, my latest endeavor, Brand Way of the Gun. Uh, you see it scrolling there at the bottom at AkariPress.com. Also working on Dame Drops Super Official with uh, Mr. Dame Drops, the uh, fantastic pitch man and YouTuber. Uh, you can go to DameComic.com and uh, sign up there. We've got uh, over 1,200 people signed up. So uh, some uh, apparently one or two people are planning on buying the comic. Awesome. And then uh, you can catch the Jill stream every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What's that? 4 p.m. Pacific? Your Three. time? Three. Okay, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, that's right. I'm doing Eastern. So yeah, you're two hours. Oh, no, sorry, it's three, three hours ahead. Three. Um, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to work the because you you are on West Coast time, so I'm trying to work it's that. Fine, in. I know what time it is. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You like much like Flavor Flav, you know what time it is. And uh, I don't know if you're a Public Enemy fan though. Uh, let's see. You can also catch the audio from this broadcast at anchor.fm slash Akari Press. Please go there, sign up. We are also on all major streaming platforms. We're on Apple. Uh, we're on Spotify, Amazon, and iHeartRadio, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, just type in Akari Press. It should come right up, and you will see this. Uh, also want to acknowledge our good friends over on Planet EJOBN that watch us each and every week. Uh, give me a thumbs up or something if you're over there on Planet EJOBN. Thank you. Um, and if you just want to hang out directly in the chat, you should be able to uh, comment on whichever platform you're watching us on, and I should see it. But if you uh, just want to hang directly in the chat, it is youtube.com slash Akari Press. All right, so this is Wire Wednesday, and we are almost done with season one of The Wire. Uh, this is uh, this is episode 11 of The Wire. And there's 13? or 12? Yeah, there's 13 episodes this season. I think this is the only season that has 13 episodes. I think the... The other ones have 12, except for the last season, which is a 10-episode season, because uh, they almost didn't bring The Wire back for season five, but the fans were like, you can't have this incredible show and not bring it back. And then HBO was like, nobody's well, watching. Well, they that all the time. Yeah, that's what I mean, like, and, and HBO <laughs> was... all the time. That's the weird thing about my The Wire. My Venture Brothers is gone. I'm so sad. My favorite show. Right. And that's 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 one of the weird things about The Wire where it became more popular after it got off the air. It's like, you know, it went off the air and people were like, why didn't people watch this show when it was on the air? You know, it was like it was never a huge uh well, rating. Today, I mean, at the time it's like it's an HBO show. Not everyone has HBO, you know. Yeah, that's true, but like that would be part of it. But they had some juggernaut hits like The Sopranos and Game of Thrones that were like huge. Like The Sopranos finale was was like beating some of the network shows when it aired. It was, you know, that's so they have if they have a, a hot show, mm -hmm. just like you see uh, Walking Dead, it gets or it used to anyway. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, Walking Dead. Let's see. Oh. Let's see here. Anyone know what program the this is? We're using StreamYard. Uh, we're using StreamYards. That uh, if, uh, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's what we do. But yeah, we're obviously not going to show the program because you get in trouble when you show people. But if you uh, if you sync up with us, because I'm on HBO Max, but you, I mean, if you have Blu-rays or whatever, uh, some kind of on-demand service with HBO, you would go to season one and then episode eleven. And get to the zero mark, and then we can uh, sync up. Because I, I noticed some of the podcast people that have contacted me tell me it's like, oh yeah, like I'll I'll just sync up uh, when you, I'll listen to the podcast later and sync up with you guys. So really? uh, that that's uh, that's nice. And so uh, let me see. But this one, this episode is directed by a gentleman by the name of Stephen A. Shill. He's a British director, directed a ton of television, including 13 episodes of your all-time favorite show, Jill Dexter. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Jill, not a big fan of Dexter, but he directed thirteen I just episodes. Like Dexter, the <sighs> yeah. Did, okay, so anyway, we've already talked about that though. Yes, we have. But did you see the news that they are bringing Dexter back for a ten episode miniseries? I think beginning next year. So no, yeah, but you know, yeah, I, I really don't follow entertainment news. But any news of anybody bringing something back these days just doesn't surprise me because there are no new ideas. They think that they can only make money by old shit. It's annoying. Mm. Yeah, I was surprised at that because, like I said, the, they they really shit the bed the way Dexter ended. So I was kind of surprised to hear. I and I, you know, you obviously know I love Dexter, and you didn't. And uh, but I didn't like the way that it ended. It's mm -hmm. as we we both agreed on that. Uh, so um, that is uh, I was like I said ten episodes. I'll probably give a the the first one a look, and if it sucks, I'll bail real that quick. That sounds like. See, I like how Psych does it. <laughs> like, we'll do an uh, uh, like a little movie every yeah. five years, and I, yeah, so it's like I'm Columbo. Totally yeah, cool with that. Yeah. Um, that's another one of my. I don't know. I'd call it a guilty pleasure because I think it's a fun. No, movie. I enjoyed Psych. That what like was that Psych. that one episode where they dressed up and they were doing the Michael Jackson stuff. <laughs> they always it's it's very rep. It's a show that's very referency, which is surprising <laughs> that I like it, but it works with the characters and everything. And I like mm -hmm. Corbin Burnson on that show, too. It's fun. Indeed. Anyway. I always enjoyed show. him on L.A. Law. But, okay. like, they're not coming back for a 10-episode season. They just make a little movie and you know, we'll, go about we're, we're getting 10 more episodes of Dexter. So, Ugh, uh, rough. <laughs> and, yeah. So, okay. So, here we go. I am on HBO Max, as I am sure Miss Jill is. I'm ready. Uh, and uh, I am on the zero mark. And, uh, like I said, this is... The Wire, season one, episode 11. It's called The Hunt. And uh, I am going to do the little countdown and hit the button if uh, you guys are watching on whatever platform you're watching. And so, okay, so let me do it. Three, two, one. And now hit your button. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going, it's going. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, now, as you may have recalled, if you were with us last week, Kima Greggs got shot. Oh, yeah, right I was just about end. to say, I have no idea what's happening right now. I <laughs> forgot what happened. Of yeah. course, Kima. So, okay. yeah, we're picking up directly after the events uh, of uh, of uh, last week. So, there is the great John Dorman, or Donan, John, Do John, Do John something, John, John. <laughs> I think it's John Doman. Donan? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the characters' names. I don't know the actors' names. Uh, that guy. He is Rawls. <laughs> I know that that part. He is. The he taller is, one uh, or the fatter one? The the taller one is Major Rawls at this time, and then he will become Deputy Rawls or whatever. He soon, eventually, he will become the commissioner. Aha! Uh -huh. There is Robert Colesbury, who plays Detective Cole, who will die right before season three begins. Hmm. Um, but. Uh, How many yeah. people like on this original squad end up dying in this show? Uh, well, we talked, what was a couple episodes ago about the guy that plays the Colonel of uh, the, he gets cancer and he dies. And, but he actually does film. I mean, on this, on the wire squad, these people on, you know, that are working together. McNulty, Keem, all these, those people. Oh, they make it the, the whole. Not the detectives. They make the I'm whole not talking way. about the, these detectives. I'm talking about their little unit. But I guess they go off in their separate ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, because like I said, the guy that plays Cole, he dies. And then the okay, colonel well, dies. Main characters, I guess. Yeah, just, just the little side characters, yeah. So and nobody then obviously named, we no know main that characters uh, die? no, hmm. no, and then I obviously find that kind of interesting actually. And I mean, just dying as far as in real life. <laughs> well, no, I'm talking about in the show. No, the characters. Let me see. None of the cops die, and then we know obviously Stringer Bell will die. Omar will die. Um, hmm. It's interesting that the none of the cops die. That's a good point. I mean, main characters. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Hmm. 
So, yeah. That's, you know, that's actually a, a serious television trope where they, they all, there's Orlando. Oh, Orlando. It was always uh, going to end that way for Orlando. Yeah, or, Orlando. I, mean, I like how his hair is still point. laid out. You know, he still got that nice little, he still got that nice little perm <laughs> blowed out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was like, you know, hey, we're going to put all this blood on you, but make sure your hair is just still laced out all. He's just dead. <laughs> uh -huh. So this is this goes back to what Orlando had mentioned on uh, at the end of the previous episode where where you see Rawls looking up there and seeing that the sign had been flipped. He, right. he used they to change the signs to screw with yeah. the cops. And matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, as they kind of get into his backstory in latter episodes, you kind of hear him kind of talk about him used to, he used to patrol in these areas. And so he, he was like, no, this ain't, I know this area, you know, and he knows the signs wrong. So yeah. he kind of switches it around. So, but that's where he started Makes before sense. he became the long opening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember who, I can't remember who sings the, uh, the, um, God, he's a pretty famous singer too. He who sings the uh, way down in the hole in season two, because you know they change it every season. And then I can't remember. Then, uh, I can't do a quick Google. Because I know he he sang um, that song like Hallelujah or whatever they. He um. You know. Um, he I know they they had him in uh, Shrek in the first Shrek I think or was it second Shrek. I am not a Shrek fan. Sorry. Oh, don't like oh, blasphemy, no. woman. No. Oh. No. Although. Whatever, what man. <laughs> Whoa, man. Whoa, man. And I do like no. that movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that used to be a movie my friends and I would just constantly quote all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, dope on the damn table is what uh, Daniel said. That is the title card there. Uh, there he is talking to the to the gentleman that I, I can't remember his character's name, but that was a guy that was a real. He was like the real district attorney or police, some kind of sheriff or whatever in the Baltimore area, and got arrested. Had to actually go oh, to jail. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. The the pattern of uh, hi hiring criminals for your show. <laughs> There's a lot of criminals that, that will work on the wire, yes. So uh, uh we, we haven't even met the oh deacon my God, who Tom was apparently Waits. hello, I like Tom what yeah. I, so so yeah, we get Tom topics. Waits and as the yeah. when you walk through the garden. <laughs> yeah, he's got weird. Oh, I love this. The uh this is the commissioner, the current commissioner, and he automatically assumes that even though he's in Baltimore. That the white guy is in charge, right? <laughs> and so he's a little embarrassed, but now he's talking to Daniels because he just goes, "Hey, this is the guy you're supposed to be talking to." Um, he has no idea who Kima Gregs is, and he just is I just like, think in "Okay." Any situation, it's like you should never make certain assumptions. You know, it's like never saying to like a woman, like, "Oh." Oh, I'm so happy that you're pregnant. If you have no idea, you know, like shit like that. Mm. You know, like it's a very human thing to mess up on, and in other situations, there are definitely underlying reasons. But oof. okay, so we're at the crime that. scene now. Assumptions. Yeah, they're they're working crime scene. They uh they got footprints. We obviously got blood. We've got soda that has been spilled, <laughs> which uh idiot uh county cop that had given them all the money for to buy the drugs in the previous episode is pissed off that the that the drug dudes have stolen his money after shooting the cop and uh I'm and Rawls just basically they care about that as much honestly like because he's pissed off about all the paperwork he's gonna have to you know he yeah, gave see, him that, like yeah that's it he's not really upset about them yeah he's not upset about the money well he he did mention when he gave it to him he was like hey Make sure this money comes back or it's my ass. And then obviously the, the guys have stolen the money. Well, obvi that's like a, such a bullshit statement. Yeah, obviously. And and then but 
a, a human has gotten multiple gunshots with right. the, you know, so and he's like, guys, you lost my money. Yeah, what the situation's fuck? changed, asshole. <laughs> and and Ross just told him, he was like, hey, take that money and shove it up your ass, but we just lost police here, you know. And you see McNul McNulty is covered in blood. He feels terrible because he knows that a lot of him sitting down and talking to the judge and getting this ball rolling, really pushing for them to do this, if he hadn't done all that, then Kima Griggs wouldn't be laid up right now with, with gunshots. That's such a martyr way for him to look at it, though, honestly. Like, this is all my doing, all my fault. Like, this isn't part of their job description. Mm. Like, she wouldn't have been and, in a day. Like, fine, but again, McNulty. I don't know. It's, a, it's playing the martyr a little bit, if you ask me. Well, I, I love uh, I love John Doman here with with uh, with uh, Dominic and uh, uh, Dominic Wetz and oh, this reminds me before yeah. I forget, and I wrote this down. Okay, I was watching because I love my musicals, and I was uh -oh, watching a whole bunch of different like um, different documentaries. Like I was watching the making of Miss Saigon and all this other stuff, and I didn't realize this, but um, Clark Peters is in Chess, the concert. Um, mm. Chess the Musical. Um, I just thought that was cool. I was like, oh my god, hey, Clark Peters. Um, yeah, Clark anyway, Peters is brilliant. Cool. Huh? So he, like, it makes sense that he's a stage actor because he's a great actor. Yeah, and he's also, I, I don't know if he's going to be in this upcoming season, but his Dark Material season two, he was in season one. Uh, they did, his character's still alive, so I'm hoping he is back for season two. But his Dark Materials, which is the Golden Compass, uh, you know, uh, that uh, I was thought that Stephen that, King or something? What? I don't that's, know. That's, um, I don't know if you ever saw the original movie that, that there was, you know, it's like three novels, if I'm not mistaken, but the Golden Compass, uh, which had, uh, what's the chick used to be married to? Nicole, whatever. She used to be married to Tom Cruise. Nicole Kidman? Um, Nicole Kidman, yeah, she was, she was. Uh, is it a young adult series or is it a? a yeah, it was. They were trying to compete with Harry Potter in okay, the movie. No, they, that. yeah, they spent like a hundred and something million dollars. The uh, special effects were crazy. All star cast, the movie bombed. They didn't make their money back. But who else? Uh, was HBO it? Anybody else? She's not. It's like I don't know. She's not much of a draw for me necessarily. Like, yeah, not that she's um, a bad actress per se. Just. Mm. Well, they had Ian McKellen as the voice of the uh, Ian McKellen, and I can't remember. Oh, the he's guy in that everything. In. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was the voice of one of the polar is bears. Is it a children's movie? He's got to be in it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I oh enjoyed. I thought he the movie was, was actually good. Uh, I, that was what I forgot to do. I've been so busy. I remember I told you I was going to watch Cats. No, I, no don't, don't, don't. I have you. to suffer through even, it. I have to watch yeah. it. Maybe a few so. scenes. I would not sit. Okay. I didn't sit through the whole thing. That's for sure. Okay, so here's Jay. Okay, so now they got the footprints again. There's, there's, uh, yeah, yeah, Bonk and Jay, Jay Landsman, who is a real police officer. At least the the name Jay Landsman was a real police officer, although ah. I'm pretty sure he's retired now. And they're going to give the real Jay Landsman the uh, character in the show as someone else. <laughs> Do you know if his character is based off of that character as far as like personality wise or story wise at all? Well, or he just clearly doesn't look name? like a 300. The Jay Landsman, when you see the real Jay Landsman, he doesn't look anything like. But the guy that okay. plays him in, on The Wire is a great actor. Okay. So, okay. So this is them. They got the tape from where Kima was wired up in the mm. thing. And this is when they're going to, they're actually going to hear her get shot, which is terrible. Okay. And there's, like I said, there's commissioner. Yeah. Savino. Boom. And uh, yeah, this is not good. Okay. Yeah, this is, yeah. You hear Orlando telling them this is about when they switch the signs up. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's about to be money time. Uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. I don't know what a stash is. Um, Question: Did we sit through this whole scene in the last episode? What they're listening to? to? We yeah, did. the yeah we did. 
We did. Oh my. Why are we? Why are we doing this again? Except eh, to get the people. Whatever. We are using we Streamyard. Dramatic like effects. We need McNulty puking in a thing. Yeah. Yeah, he feels like I said he's blaming himself for everything. Yeah. And, the uh, okay. John Doman. It's all is your fault, incredible. McNulty. Yeah, this is. Uh, but you know, and we know that Rawls can't stand McNulty, but he's yeah. like, dude, don't put all this on you. This is not your fault. He's very much um, a leader right now in the situation. You can't yeah. say anything bad about him really here. He's yeah, he's you, doing his job, what he's supposed to do. Yeah, we ain't got time for the pity party, bro. Yeah, and keeping everybody in line and doing what he's supposed to do right now. He's, you know. Yeah, the I love it. been he, shot. Of course they're going to do their job. Yeah, he's like, we both know you're an asshole, McNulty, but this is not on you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, oh, like they aren't all assholes. Also. Yeah, well, McNulty in their has own special uh, ways. <laughs> <in their own. laughs> oh God, yeah, he's telling them. Yeah, he told. He said, "You know that the guy looking at you right now hates your guts, but this ain't on you." <laughs> yeah, he's. I love that line. He said, "Shit went bad, and she took two for the company." You know. Ooh. All right, so now they're kicking in everybody's doors. Bam. You know, they just, they don't care where they're going. They, they're arresting everybody. You know, it just, it doesn't matter if they have a lot of good information or not. So, yeah, that's, um, they just, uh, yeah, we're looking for Savino. No, he's my baby. You know, so that's Savino's mom. Uh, I love the look on her face. She was like, no, Savino, that's my baby. Your baby just shot a cop. You know. And so, okay, they got the wire. I'm surprised these guys are back on phones. They clearly know they're under surveillance. Why are they talking on, on the damn pay phones? Mm, that's a good question. They clearly Why know. They Why would they be? Yeah. Except <sighs> for the story, because we have to hear what's going on. That's the only reason. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I'm like, this. Yeah, because right? at this point, they know, they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the phones, the cops are on them. A police officer has been shot. They right. know. So Also, why would you... I think they know that when a cop gets shot, the cops aren't going to play around even more than they were exactly. or so before. So it makes zero sense. All right. So I'm surprised we bay is still, if I'm we bay, I need to be going somewhere else already. You know, he was there. Um, you know, it was a couple of them. It was him and the uh, well, little think man. Anybody would... involved in this little scenario would already be whisked away, and the cover up would begin. Like, I don't get this at all. Actually, this is just... yeah. Let me just stay in Baltimore after a police officer got well. He well, you hear Weebay say they didn't know that she was a cop. They thought she was okay. just. He he told he told you know Stringer. He's like, we thought she was one of Orlando's hoes. We didn't know. And then Stringer's telling him, he's like, no, nah, that chick was a cop. And he was like, no, nah, that wasn't no cop. And they like, she's a cop, dude. And you, this is the meme. They yeah, share this once meme. Stringer knows that his crew shot a cop, why isn't he more like organizing these guys to get the hell out of Dodge? I don't really understand. Yeah, that, that's weird that they let the sun come up and Weebay is still in Baltimore. <laughs> Why does it make sense? It's like, huh, the woman was a police officer, apparently. I'm going to stick around. And... Yes, the news seems actually a little too cool about this whole, whole, whole ordeal, frankly. Well, he knows he wasn't there. Yeah, but uh... he's like the guy that's supposed to uh, put out all these fires, no? This is true. Isn't but that he, part of his This is job? what he's doing, though. He they They're looking at the situation. They're like, okay, so Vino... We think he he won't snitch on us, so we don't have to take him out. Little man is going to freak out. Even though Le little man's a soldier, little man's going to freak out when he finds out that they thought they were just shooting a regular person. Now he's going to freak out because he knows shooting a cop is going to be like a needle. So they're, they're freaking out over that. So he's like, okay, 
We can get Savino to go to jail if they catch him. You got to kill little man, and then you got to leave town. So now we basically like, okay, I got to go kill little man, and then I'm going to pack my stuff up and leave town. So that's the plan. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's Carver going to see Kima's uh, uh, wife, girlfriend, uh, partner, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so, yeah, he he feels terrible because that's one of the things they said at the hospital. They had been at the hospital all that time. And uh, and uh, Lester said, did anybody tell Kima's people that she's gotten shot? Right. And they're like, and they're like, oh, God, Oops. no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, they should have told her hours ago. It's daylight. Remember, she got shot at night. So, yeah. Okay. So now they're back. I love, I love the way Lester is just so smooth the way he just walks a crime scene. Look at it. Oh, and this is the big pool right here. This is little man soda can, and it's got a nice little thumbprint on it. And of course, he's got a criminal record. Oh. <sighs> You 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 need good police officers like Lester or Bunk or or McNulty working these scenes because the rest of these guys are pretty much idiots or they need some mm. direction. Right. So, okay. Oh, this is shameful right here, where the commissioner is supposed to go and comfort the loved one of the injured officer, and be when he finds out. You know, he finds out that Kima's a lesbian. He doesn't want to go over and comfort her. So Burrell is going to be the one to have to do it. So I, I thought that was interesting. Oh, it's wrong. Yeah, so he's going to go talk to him. And he's going to like, oh, she's a, she's a lesbian. Oh, I don't, I don't, even, I don't do even understand why it matters. This is the person who's representing Kima's, quote, family that you're supposed to comfort. Who cares what the deal is? It could be your fucking cousin for all they know. Who cares? Oh, that's a little shameful. I thought that was a little weird. A little? <laughs> I was like, I'm just saying, do your fucking job, man. Dude. You know, ugh, that's horrible. I was like, I don't want to talk to her. Okay. And there's Kima's hat, which is horrible that you just see. McNulty's finally washing the blood off. Oh, just been walking around with that blood on him all the time. And uh man, he's so he's so young here. I was like, I was like you know, he just got in the news a couple of days ago. They uh he was on set filming some movie and apparently they got pictures of him. Well, it's not apparently the pictures are online. He was making out with his co-star. He's married. He's been married for like 20 years and got daughters with this woman. Yikes. And yeah, so they called him like uh, being very affectionate with his like 20 some odd, 25 year younger co-star. And uh, yeah, because he's like 54, 55. And she's like maybe 29, 30 or whatever. She, yeah, she's, uh, she's quite attractive though. But uh, his wife is uh, saying that their marriage is fine. Uh, his, the fact that his wife has put out a statement I thought was interesting. All He's right. famous enough for paparazzi shit? What's this guy's name again? Uh, Dominic West? He's been in a bunch of stuff. I was like, yeah. He's, uh, might be more famous over in the UK. He's uh, yeah, I don't I definitely don't see him as that famous over here. He's been on a couple of American series, but he's not that famous over here. Some movies. Oh, he was British? in 300. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, oh, uh, uh, this is when they find out that Lester got the the fingerprint back from the uh, soda soda can, and he's the only one that was smart enough to actually go, "Hey, maybe we should uh, take this soda can and and run it for fingerprints." And they actually well, did you know, when you say the only one smart enough, like they are the detectives. I mean the the cops that are around, that's not their job. They're just there to, like, secure the scene and shit. I mean, I guess if they're searching, if that was, was if they were part of the detail of searching with Lester, I guess. But, I mean, the, you know, or the crime scene crew is the one who looks for that stuff, or, right? Like, the detectives point out all that stuff, like, hey, 
I don't even. I yeah, don't but know. like I said, I you do see people going around like casing the crime scene. They're they're looking at uh, footprints. They're doing stuff, and they're, that can was sitting there, and nobody was like, oh, it's probably somebody just littered and threw a can. And he goes, uh, you know, bag that up and get evidence on it. You know, so he actually, you know, thought, hey, let's do that because it might be something. And of course, like I said, it comes back for a little man. So now they definitely have little man to tied. Uh, they have little man tied to a police shooting, which of course uh, we know that uh, Stringer has already told we made to take care of that little situation. So you don't have to be worried about it. Oh God. Okay. There's her uh, clothes. That's, uh, that's not good. Oh, that's, that's Bub's page and chemo. Because she was supposed to give him, right. yeah, she was supposed to give him a couple hundred dollars so that he could get set up with a mattress, and you know he's trying to get clean. And uh, she promised she was gonna give him a couple hundred dollars so he could get set up and try to get some rehab. Oh no, here we go, and here we go. Oh boy, yeah, they. They, think, they beat the shit out of him, right? Yeah, because they think somehow he's connected to this police shooting. Yeah. They they make some mistakes here. <laughs> they make a few mistakes. Uh, uh, there's my man, Poot. And, uh, okay. And, oh, yeah, that's Wallace. He's still, I forgot, he's still in the county. So he, he's talking about how bored he is at his grandma's house out there in the country. And, uh, I think that's interesting that she doesn't have a phone in her home or maybe he well, clearly her phone's not tapped if she does have one. So that's um, so the crickets are keeping him up at night. Isn't that quaint? By the way, uh shout out to Michael B. Jordan. That was something that just got announced about three days ago that he got the rights to produce a static shock movie or TV show. Something. I think it's a TV show something he's doing a sta I'm, I'm a big milestone comics fan so okay, uh, it's like you know, it was, what a static shock i don't know you don't remember the, did you ever you never watched the cartoon then you know it's like yeah michael he's producing uh he's gonna produce a static shock little movie or something so he's been he started posting static shock stuff on his instagram and twitter so was, i think that's cool uh, a lot of people that you know going back like 20 some odd years that love the milestone universe and and Dwayne McDuffie and, and you know D Denny Cowan and all those people. So, so okay, so uh okay, so this guy who we will see in all five seasons uh thinks that Bubs had something to do with Kima getting shot, even though he's he wasn't even there. And uh uh oh, oh but, but oh, they oh, actually no, that's kind not... of stop them before they beat the shit out of them actually yeah yeah that's good oh man that's okay so there's there's bonk he's like yo all right so there's i can't remember italian last name i can't remember there's so many of course there's so many of these guys santangelo that's him okay so aha uh -huh. so now we see you see my man Bodie. Okay. So they're hoping that Bodie is going to uh okay. Bodie looks very paranoid. <laughs> I think he's waiting for the drop. I think he's waiting on drugs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And it's supposed to come down. Yeah, yeah, here it comes. Okay. Drugs. The drugs. Here it comes. Drop the drugs down. I'm not really using the paper. Boom, he's got it. It's like he caught that thing like Julio Jones on the Falcons. And, uh, okay. But here's the thing. Since the cops, since they have become aware that the cops have been on him, oh, there's there's McNulty with the Jameson. He loves Jameson. But uh, uh, the the Barksdale people, they rotate the stash house every every few days or whatever. So now that the drop has been made, it's time to rotate out. They used to keep the, the stash house the same, but they remember Omar hit them, and they know the cops are on them. So now the the regular routine is smarter about it. 
Yeah, and which they should, you know. So they was like, okay, Omar was we we got hit by Omar because Omar was able to watch and pick up our pattern, and the cops have been watching us. So whenever we make the drops now, whenever we re up, you rotate and switch the house out now. So you'll see later when they they go, okay, now we know where the stash house is. They go in and kick the door in, and Bodie's laughing because he's like, no, we switched it out already. <laughs> so it was like, no, he's not. That's not where we're at. So you know, I always wondered if uh, the actor, uh, what's the guy that plays uh, Lieutenant Daniels? He always almost looks like he got jaundice in his eyes or something. You don't notice how he's kind of got this. He's kinda, very uh, thin. That's for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I love to interview him because he's been in a bunch of stuff that I. He was in. He's in the John Wick movies. That's what they. He's the. He's the. Uh, what the hotel guy at the at the. Uh, what's the hotel in John Wick? I can't remember. I have no but, idea. Man, I'd love to interview him. I can't. The, con, the is it the Continental? I think it's the Continental. I have okay. no idea. <laughs> Zero. You don't watch John Wick? No. You don't watch John Wick? I don't really care. I don't care about action movies really. Oh. Is that the Tom Cruise one or the Does... Keanu Reeves one? That's a Keanu Reeves, yeah, John. But yeah, and they're apparently making like two more. Wow. <laughs> I was like, God. Damn. <laughs> but I know Keanu's down in Australia shooting Matrix Four right now. But he's supposed to come back and finish shooting up uh, John Wick Four, and then there's supposed to be maybe a five. Looks like so. Okay, so this is Stringer finally telling uh, Avon. That okay, here's the money that they took that is dirty money. It's clearly the the bills have been marked. Right, so right, now right. they know they look because that, that was the deal. They were like, okay, you guys shoot shoot up Orlando and you guys can keep the money that he was gonna pay you. And that was the deal. So now they go, Oh damn, so you can't keep the money, you gotta burn the money because it's right. marked bills. And uh yeah. I don't know. So yeah. So yeah. This is yes, yeah, Stringer's like, yo, that's my fault. I told them they could keep the cash and take out Orlando, which payday. And then so yeah, see that Avon go, where did Orlando get this kind of cash? That was the problem. Remember, Orlando was mad at Avon because Avon was barely paying him anything. <laughs> so how the hell Orlando gonna get like ten, fifteen thousand dollars just like that? How was Stringer not? How did he let that slide? Yeah. This is that's where I start to see, especially as we get into the latter season with Stringer. Stringer is extraordinarily smart. He's a very smart man. It, matter of fact, when he dies and they go into his apartment or his condo that he's uh, you know, he's renting, um, He's got the this bookshelf with all these incredible books, and and McNulty can't believe it's like, oh, this dude actually reads, and he's like reading like the Iliad and stuff. You know, he's reading stuff that scholars would read. He's not a dumbass, right? But as we start going on, he's very book smart, and he has a lot of common sense, right, and good business sense. The street side is something that he's not really up on. You'll see that a little more in season two. Some of the dumb stuff that he ends up doing with the uh, the character that's going to be introduced, brother Muzon. For where... somebody to get to the position he is, though, how can he not be street smart? That doesn't make sense to me. How could I... he get to that position without being street smart? He's pretty high up the chain to not have handled situations properly. But he was always with Avon. He was always Avon's wingman. Okay. So Avon was always, if there was always some war stuff, if it was muscle stuff, that was Avon handling that. And then you had then Avon is that like explained in the show, or is that like you explaining it? That's me just explaining curious. it. No, that's me explaining it because that's just the way I, I've never seen Stringer as a street dude. Avon's a street dude. And he don't he don't like all the he he likes the fighting the war the game, and then when it's the business stuff, that's you you hear him and Stringer talk about how they came up and that Stringer was always a little different, but they they kind of fit together. So 
it's it, it trap seems, sort of thing. Yeah, it seems like the the weaknesses that Avon had, Stringer makes up for. So it, it's like, yeah, I don't care about the you know trying to set up places where we can launder money. Well, then I question <laughs> putting Stringer in charge of any of the street business. Then that's what I'm not. That's what I'm saying. Like, sure, he's smart. I would see why Avon would want him around. But if he fucks up the street stuff, I don't get it. Whatever. But they they hadn't been challenged up until this point. You know, hmm. you even hear him. I mean, you think about it. They even like uh, when they talk about sharing the towers with Prop Joe in the in the latter seasons. Um, you know, Avon's like, no, I fought a war for those towers. I don't want to give up three of the towers. We 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 fought to keep those and I'm planning on keeping all six of them, but they don't have any product coming in. And Stringer's like, no, give him three. We keep the other three and we'll make more money. And Stringer was actually right because they shared the towel with prop Joe and prop Joe shared that good product with them. And there wasn't any bloodshed. They were able to just run drugs out of the tower without anybody killing each other. And so everybody made way more money, but Avon don't think that that, like no, but this is the game. I don't want to be friends with nobody. <laughs> and so, like Avon is, like I say, Avon and Stringer are different, but they both they work well together. Okay, so now we got uh, we got Levy, because obviously the cops know Sorvino was there. They know for a fact a uh, little man was there, although a uh, little man is dead at this point. I'm pretty sure. Because they, they haven't found his body yet, but they will. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but yeah, they they never showed a uh, little man getting executed on screen. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure Weebay, because Weebay's gone now, or he's about to be. No, that's right. He, Weebay hadn't left yet because he's got to show uh, D'Angelo how to take care of his fish. He's got, he, mm. he likes fish. He's got exotic fish, and you got to show him, hey, you got to feed the fish this way or whatever. Do this. Yeah, I don't remember what's happening here. More BS with him and the lawyer. Yeah. So. Blah blah blah. I real yeah. I don't remember what happened here. Yeah. Well, you get him. Well, and that, he's... move on. Next scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold on. So let me see. So we're in there. And uh, yeah. Next scene. But you see Perlman is also kind of upset that McNulty threatened Levy because she's telling she has aspirations to be a judge one day. And she's like, oh, hey, so we're going back to that scene. Well, I mean, did you, rew- yeah. did you rewind. Well, uh, yeah, I was having what scene some... are you on? I am in. Hold up. Do you not see Clark and uh, what's his face? Hold on, hold on. I'm going. I'm going back because yeah, the thing's messing up. I had a okay. Hold on, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Now they're Getting in out of there. Dude's office. What's, what, what's the time track you're on? What does it say on your screen? Um, thirty-five, 50, uh, thirty-six. Thirty-six. Okay, because I'm at thirty-five ten. Don't stop it because I'm gonna get right there where you are. Okay, he said they're thirty-six. In- Boom. Some okay. Dude's office talking. Yeah, they're at Burrell's. Trina's too. Let's talk. Okay. Okay. So there's Cla- Yeah. Okay. So he's telling Press to check. Okay. So they're looking at the phone records. Probably a second or wait, two wait, behind. Wait, wait, we're past that. We're in dude, dude's office. Burrell oh, or yeah. whatever. There you get Clark's in, or not Clark. Uh, Davis is in there. Okay. So let me see. Nineteen there, okay, left, now I'm at, thirty-six forty-five in. I'm at thirty-six. What happened? 50. Did you pause? What happened? No, my thinking the the uh, wireless paused it, and then I had oh. to get it. Yeah, the wire okay. jumped up, but I was trying to play it off, but you 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 busted me on there. Well, I just I, <laughs> this whole long you scene started. is going on that I have nothing to say because oh. frankly it's a boring scene. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't no. remember what's happening. 
Oh god, it was terrible. And then like we moved like three scenes past, and you're like, well, blah blah blah. I'm like, no, it's, it's over. Move on. Oh yeah. Oh god. Now they're talking to who's this little guy? Who is this? Is this the guy that shot Kim? I have no idea. Yeah, let me see here. Are we on the okay. same? Are you with me yet? And well, it depends. A bunch of lawyers sitting around a table. There's. Yeah, I'm trying to get. Whatever. What's your time count? What's your time count? Okay, yeah, that's Servino. Thirty-seven, thirty-nine. Oh, Savina. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're saying okay. it's like baking soda or something. Boom. Yeah, so the drug. Okay, Mr. Bratton, who is Servino. Okay. So I am, let me make sure, I am at 3750 right now, and they're arguing about this guy shot a police, and they want him to go to jail, and blah, 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 blah and he's got a cop to the murder, and blah, blah, blah. Right, they're they trying to, like, Get some sort of a deal or something, or they want they want him to like confess to other stuff. Yeah, they want him. They want to pin some other shit they on him because. Him yeah, and and he's like, okay, the drugs that y'all had was baking soda, so we were selling fake drugs to Orlando, uh, willing to, it you know because they're trying to say, well, he wasn't the shooter, but he had he sold it. He was going to rob him for fake drugs or whatever. He, that's and. Uh, He's willing to testify about any knowledge that he has about uh, the police shooting uh, as he was not involved in that. Uh, you know, he doesn't know the location of Little Man. And uh, they never give WeeBay up, but they know WeeBay was there. <laughs> so, but yeah, they, they know for a fact Little Man was there because they got his fingerprint on the soda can. So they know that. And uh, okay, so he just yeah, uh, old girl just told him he can that he's gonna get three years, and uh, he's like, oh yeah, I can do three years, no problem. So yeah, I can do three. And uh, okay, here they are, they're booking him, putting the handcuffs on him, and uh, he just don't. Now we won't see him again until season five where he ends up working for Marlo Stanfield's crew. When he gets out, the Barksdale crew doesn't exist anymore because mm -hmm. Marlo ran him off the block. Yeah. Because, yeah, Marlo won his war with, with Avon, and Avon got locked back up. Stringer was killed, and Marlo's the new kingpin. So when, when uh, Savino gets out, he still wants to be in the game. So he has to go work for Marlo. <laughs> Ah, okay. We down. We down in the pit. There's Bodie on that couch that always makes me think you're gonna get some kind of weird infection or whatever. Lice or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Too hot so it's for a hoodie today. So <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> but um, you see uh, you see D'Angelo. And it, it bothers him that Orlando, um, you know, uh, Orlando is dead. But they also talking about, oh, man, y'all dropped police. Uh, oh, okay. So he don't even know who this dude is. He's like, yo, are you D? <laughs> How did they just, so he just, oh, okay. I guess that, they just take that as... I guess that's gospel then. If that guy said he wants to talk, you have to assume that since nobody would run up on D'Angelo Barksdale and go, "Hey, this guy wants like as a joke," like "ha ha, funny time." Not even an undercover cop, which we. I, mean, mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So. Now they're talking about Kima might end up having partial paralysis, but they're not. Uh, they're not she sure. Though, right? She recovers no. fine. No, she full, full no recovery. No consequence. It's she all for the me. drama. Yeah, a couple of shots to the chest. I mean, but that's about it. Yeah, she good. But that's it. <laughs> I didn't want that to sound as cold as it did, but uh, yeah. So, uh, and then, okay. So here's Daniels laying out the plan, which is a stupid plan. And this is Burrell's plan. But a police officer got shot and the news people are covering it. So 
uh, Burrell right, is like... They have to make some sort of an arrest for something. Yeah, Bur- Burrell's like, I want dope on the table. And and Daniels knows. It's like, yo, we still need... We, we still have work to do on these guys. It's too early to move on them. So they're going to they're going to go and hit some of the small stash houses. They know, obviously, remember what was it, two episodes ago, they found out where the the actual cookhouse is in the right. next city over. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they're keeping that information out of the warrant on purpose. And uh, because they know, they was like, okay, if we just hit these little small places, Barksdale's gonna buck a little bit, but he'll he'll think, oh, they didn't get my main stash. Like they don't know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even though they do know about it. So okay. Now D'Angelo is scared. He's got to drive this guy, and he thinks he's the one that's gonna be yeah taken because out because right? they they know he knows his family. He knows right. they they already. They're um they already took out those witnesses that had even the girl that switched her test. Remember, and you know they they right. kill all those people. So he's like, I'm family, but they may they be care. worried about me. Yeah, they yeah. might think I'm a snitch, and I know how my uncle deals with snitches. Well, unless unless you're um what's his face, and we'll just let him. Uh... I can't think of his name. We haven't seen him in this. Farmer in the Dell. What am I? Omar. Mm. Wait, who am I thinking of? Yeah, Farmer in the Dell is definitely Omar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's not on his team, but that guy's a snitch. That is the deputy ops, the current one anyway. And uh, this is when we start to figure out that there is a snitch within the case unit. Uh, but they don't know who it is. Right. You know, somebody, that's why he just got, uh, he just came down there and chewed Daniel's ass out. It's like, stop lying to me. Has the old guy already confessed that he, to McNulty, because he kind of gives up to McNulty, doesn't he? That he was kind of telling things, or does that happen like right now? And it happened a couple episodes. We're supposed to think it's him when, in the end, it's what's. No, you're talking about Santangelo. Santangelo, right, 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 right. right. Like we're supposed to think that they're talking about, and it is Santangelo, but in reality, it's not Santangelo. No, Santangelo told McNulty what about episode five? When when was the Madame Larue episode? When when they uh, did he give it up though? Did he? Yeah, he told him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he he fully confessed because he he said he didn't do it on camera, but he says, "Hey, I got to tell you something." We're spo- still supposed to think it's him, though. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They obviously yeah. think it's him, right? Yeah, because they haven't revealed to us yet who the real snitch is. This is when I, this is when he finds out that the ju- judge Phelan has uh, turned, and as you can see behind his shoulder, there his yeah. face is mysterious because that was one of the things that had caused him to kind of be a little pissed off before is when they, they had the pre-list and he was mysteriously left off of it. And now they said, Oh, that was a mistake. We didn't forget about you, buddy. And there, yeah. And he just told Jimmy, it's just business, man. You know, yeah, they were just dicking me around. So now he don't want to rock the boat. Now that he's gonna get what he he, he wants to make sure he's gonna get to stay a judge. So people always use that excuse like it's an actual excuse. Mm, it's just business. Don't don't mind any of my moral reprehensible actions. Yeah, just but... business. Okay, mm. you're still a dick. Yeah, he's t- but see, it's it's gonna be weird because they're gonna meet a few times in the they're gonna have to. McNulty's going to have to go to him a couple more times in the later seasons, and McNulty never, he thought that guy was his friend, and he never forgives him. And and well, he failed. No, like, you don't forgive or not, he's, he is to never be trusted, ever. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know. I'm glad yeah. McNulty at least learned that lesson. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, but, like, you'll hear, I think, like, in season three, He's gonna tell. He's gonna Jimmy get over it. 
<laughs> you know, it's like that shit's old news, man. Whatever happened, that was the past. Yeah, but that reflects that guy's character. Like, you can never not be on guard again. Like, it's yeah, absolutely. What he's willing to do for his own personal gain. He's a piece of shit. Like, yeah. I'm... I agree with you 1,000%. I don't 1, I can get over it and move on, but you <laughs> reflected your character. I have no respect. Yeah. So, you are absolutely correct. So, all right. <laughs> I don't want to get out of the car. Yeah. I don't want to do that <laughs> yeah, he may, yeah, He's like, come room. on. He's like, come on, man. I wouldn't want to either. It's going to be I weird. I mean, what would you, you think? I would be scared. Oh, I would definitely be concerned because uh, Weebay is... Uh, what they say he got more bodies than a than a, uh, a Chinese cemetery, whatever you know. Also, it's not like D'Angelo was has ever, even personally, I think, felt high on their list, especially recently. You know, like there's no reason for him to think that he's a protected member I'm, of their team. Do you know what I mean? He kicks it with Weebay, though. You know, you've seen a couple times where they 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 party together, they go out and have lunch and stuff. Yeah, but They're what does different. that mean? In this world, really. Mm, I mean, if Weebae's told point. to kill him, he's still going to do it. Oh, yeah. Weebae no. would not so, hesitate. So friendship doesn't really matter in this situation. Boy, he's sweating bullets. Look at him. He's crying. He thinks Weebae about to kill him. He oh, my God. Fish. And it, he's crying. That's crazy. And then he looks up and says, fish? What? <laughs> Like, yeah, man. So you need to feed the fish. <laughs> he's, he's like, wait a minute, so you're not gonna kill me. Funny. He's like, wait a minute, you're not gonna kill me. Okay. <laughs> and we basically like, pay attention, man. He's so serious about it, it's pretty. No, funny. the fish are serious with WeeBay. WeeBay well, is babies. serious about these damn fish. Now later. He, they're gonna he gonna have his baby mama and his son and and when he calls his baby mama he's gonna be like hey are you feeding my fish and she's gonna be like I'm feeding the damn fish they fish you know? <laughs> she don't care about the damn fish but she care about the money that the Barksdales are giving them for Weebay going to jail for them he eats all the murders and so you know and doesn't snitch mm-hmm. on anybody so they they've been you know they Taking they've been care of her. a couple thousand a month yeah make which yeah, she I spends think it'd be worth more than that. <laughs> Cheap bastards. He got life in prison. He will never get out. Yeah, it's, it's worth more than a couple grand a month, I'd say. Yeah, I'm if saying. they're willing to do it, <laughs> you can't replace a kid's father, though. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm like, he. Yeah, and he also, got I'd life. want to get the f out of Dodge, frankly, but he's gonna be connected to that group forever. So and what's. You know what? And this is this is a weird thing that's gonna come up in a couple of seasons when somebody else is running and prop Joe says, Why when y'all run, y'all all do y'all always run to the hood? Hmm. He's like, so we may leaves, but he just goes right up to Philly. He goes to Philadelphia. <laughs> he doesn't go in it. He should go out to like Nebraska or some shit. They're like we have the checklist of all the places our dudes go when they run. Um well, I'm saying he should have we'll went to Kansas. It. He should have went to they, Kansas. He doesn't know, Philly. he doesn't know. He doesn't know how to live there, how to fit in there, probably, right? Like, it's easy to just go to another city and kind of f- try to fit in into the same environment you were in. I mean, it does make sense to me, especially if you're not used to anything. Right. Like, he, it might be crazy to say he's not a brave person, you know? You're told to kill people and you do it. It's not like um, he has a lot of his own thoughts. Um, I don't know. That's the only way he knew how to survive was to go to an environment that he could feel comfortable in, and he knows the game, the rules already. You go to a completely tells different me place. That what's he gonna do? He he have know, to change his whole personality, probably. I mean, going from Baltimore to Philly is like walking up the street. <laughs> you in the same neighborhood. <laughs> You ain't, you know, it's like, next thing you know, you're going to go to Chicago. That's just how (laughs) connected to the life he is or was. Like, I don't know. It's like a drug addict. You can, it's easy to say, like, to Bubbles, it's like, don't you want a better life? You don't want to be living like this. You've got your sister and your nieces and nephews. 
But it's not really an easy choice to just go no. Sometimes. Now, see, okay, so they they are now the main cookhouse has been added to the warrant. But like I said, the deputy the deputy ops knows from from their snitch, which is Carver, that the main stash house was left off the warrants, which is why he chewed uh, Daniel's ass out, and so they put it back on. So now they are taking out the main. They're making out, taking out the main stash house, the cookout, and uh, okay, they got man, they got a lot of drugs in there. <laughs> oh my, that's a uh, wow. Okay, so yeah, but if that was the cookhouse, I feel like there should be way more stuff here. No, though, there's a lot of cash. Yeah, there's a lot of cash, hmm. and they're gonna lift this up and see all it. Look at all that that money. Bam, they're gonna look at each other. Yeah, this time we steal it. We didn't steal the last time, but we steal it this time. All right, cool. <laughs> so this is them stealing. I like that. I was like, yeah, all right, cool. We got it. The rest of it's evidence. Cool. Is there any <laughs> cooking equipment? Like, there's just drugs and money. There's like, isn't that where they supposedly cook this shit up? Yeah, but when they kind of weird. Remember the other episode where they 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 were trying to confirm that that was a cookhouse, and they when they took that trash out, they had mm-hmm. like all those burned pot, pots and pans and stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. So, so maybe yeah, they, they were they were moving cookhouses, and they, they, they were probably in shit. Yeah, they were probably trying to shut everything down at that point, you know, because they was like, "Yo, these guys are coming." Mm, if that's true, would you just throw that shit in the trash for the curb? Hell, no. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that seems like plot convenience. Stop being smarter than me, Jill. Stop I- it. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just. That's actually not a lot of drugs. I was like, dude, when you hear about how much you talk about, they're making, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand a week or whatever, over hundred something thousand a month uh, per tower. You know, you talking I don't about know the, how much is that little? You know, what is it? A dime bag, ten bucks, whatever. Is oh yeah, little, but. And I know at this particular time, all their drugs come from New York. They come directly from New York, which is um, they'll get into that more in the uh, second season because their New York connection uh, finds out that D'Angelo was about to snitch on the whole family and he decides to cut them off and he doesn't want to do business with them anymore. So, seems like it actually a good decision. <laughs> yes, um, and but Stringer off at the pass. Stringer goes up to New York and he goes, "Hey, we just gave you all the court transcripts because they did talk D'Angelo into not snitching, and he took a, a multi-year deal where he's gonna have to go away for like twenty years instead of snitching, which they had given him a deal where he could have snitched and walked away, you know, and instead he took twenty years for the family." So, all right. Well, there it is. That's the end of the episode. But um, it's kind of messed up. Like I said, I, um, the the thing where Daniels is like, we're going to put everything on the y- on the uh, warrants except for the main house. You know, the little the little side places that we've surveilled that we know that they do the drugs and stuff. Yeah. We'll we'll uh, grab it from there. But. We're gonna leave the main house off the warrants, and then obviously, like I said, Carver, uh, Carver uh, snitches to the to the deputy commission, uh, the deputy commissioner, and lets them know, hey, uh, they're they're uh, they're about to serve the warrants, but they're leaving that particular place off. Why are they leaving it off? We if that's the main house, they should be kicking that door in too. He comes in, he 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 snatches a knot out of Daniel's ass and lets him know y'all are gonna handle that too. So then they had to put it back on. And that's when Daniel starts to figure out. Hmm. Okay, so we know who all was there when I when I let everybody know that we were gonna uh have all the the places except for the main stash house on the warrants. So that information leaks. So who who's my snitch? And then they're going to find out, you're going to find out that uh, they're actually going to have a day where the bosses don't get, you know, the the, the whole detail has been leaked. like the next episode? This is what's going to happen in the next two episodes. Well, why don't we just wait? Well, 
just explain. But we, you're right. You're right. We got two episode. more episodes. Like, why come back in for the next? Like, why watch the next episode then? You, you are right. You're, you're right. I, was just, <laughs> I can't help it. I just talk and so okay. Hold on. The wire. It's fine. Yeah, I do. I do. But I'm yeah. trying to say the next episode. I'm just trying to re- rail you or you know rein you in re- a little bit. You 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 and you're doing a Shut darn down, fine like... job of it. Okay, so. <laughs> So okay, so next week we will have episode twelve, which is the penultimate episode of season one. Uh, it is called "Cleaning Up," and this is where we start to see some of the things that the Barksdale people, you know, they start shutting down certain operations, doing what they need to do. Right. Um, this is also going to, and this is. Um, uh, an important episode in The Wire because this is the first episode of The Wire to be written by the great George Pelicanos, who's a, a, a outstanding crime writer and you know wrote a lot of good television and stuff like that. Um, it's going to be directed by a gentleman by the name of Clement Virgo. Uh, I'll have more information on him uh, next week as I do my research and try to be thorough. But uh, uh, let me see here. Jill, uh, anything that you would like to say before I uh, do all the little shilling and get us out of here? No, just goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Avi da shang goodbye. Okay, but uh, all right. So again, we'll be back. Jill stream every Wednesday at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And is it 3 p.m.? Western, I don't know, Pacific. Pacific. Yeah, right. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I, I'm trying to remember. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. And uh, okay, go to damecomic.com and sign up. The more you call yourself an idiot, the more that it will come true. Yeah, I was like, I, I do. I have no self esteem. Never mind. Uh, and then you can get the uh, the podcast at uh, anchor.fm slash card press or go to. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. Just type in a card press. It should come right up. Appreciate everybody that listens on on the uh, streaming platforms. We do appreciate that. Uh, Planet EJLBN, again, uh, appreciate all you guys that hang and watch with us. And, of course, if you are on uh, one of the other platforms and you want to just hang directly in the chat, it is YouTube.com slash a card press. <sighs> all right. Uh, and, oh, yeah. Oh, I guess I got to do my stuff. Facebook, yeah, I Instagram, guess you, I guess so. Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting. Yeah, Facebook, yeah, Instagram, well. Twitter, and on YouTube, all at Akari Press if you want to reach me. And if you type in AkariPress.com, it will take you to Brand Way of the Gun. We are just shy of $31,000. Thank you guys the, uh, that have been supporting. And, uh, of course, check us out uh, on Amazon and Teespring and all that good stuff. Links in the description. Avidas. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Bye, guys. Was it Firefly Funhouse? I don't know. <laughs> ah, yeah. And there you go. I think we're all. Are we all there? Yeah, it's just live still. No, it's not. It's it's just. It'll be one of these weird streams where you can't. It's not paused on my end. It's still going. No, no it's still going. And I've hit the button. That's what's so funny. I've hit the button. And it's not letting me shut it down. That's hilarious. That's weird. <laughs>